the side hustle tier list for beginners. That's what I'm gonna be talking about today. I'm gonna be talking about the best side hustles that you can do if you are a beginner right now and you're trying to make some extra money. Now I'm gonna say right now, this is not gonna be a heavily scripted video. I'm just gonna be talking off the top of my head and this is just my opinion. I have tried a bunch of these side hustles myself. I've also gone to a bunch of different business conferences and I've met other people who have made businesses out of these. I also lived in a house full of entrepreneurs. So I've basically seen all of these. I've seen how much money they make. I've seen how stressed they are. I've seen how many employees that they have to hire. I've seen how passive these types of businesses are or how stressful they are, right? So some of these types of businesses, it's very easy to make it to $10,000 per month, but to scale above that would be very hard. Other types of businesses, it's extremely hard to make it to $10,000 a month, but you can actually scale them. So I'm going to be talking about all these different types of things and all these nuances in this video. So if you appreciate me making this type of content, go ahead, gently tap that like button and let's jump into it right now. All right. So first one on the list is going to be selling digital products. And there's a ton of different types of digital products products out there. For instance, Thomas Frank sells Notion templates and he makes over $100,000 a month doing it. There's lots of people out there who sell resume templates for specific types of industries and they can make a ton of money from that. So there's tons of different types of digital products that you can make. And I really do like this one. I like its simplicity and how useful it is. I also like how easy it is for a beginner to get into it. I would say this is one of those where it's very easy to make it to like 10K per month, but it could potentially be hard to scale above that. But still, this is a beginner list, so I will put this one in A tier. Next is going to be rental property or real estate or doing Airbnb or anything along those lines. So this is one of those side hustles that's very common. It's also a side hustle that has a ton of people trying to sell you some type of coaching program or course on how to get rich quick, right? A lot of people who make money in real estate are people who are teaching other people how to make money in real estate. Now, that doesn't mean it's not a good way to make money. It just means there's a lot of saturation and there's a lot of sketchiness going on. So you definitely have to know your stuff. And I would say the average person who starts off in real estate is going to make some huge mistakes that cost them tens of thousands of dollars. Even if you're super careful, you're probably still going to make some kind of mistake. But with that being said, if you stick with it, this is a super good side hustle, probably the most common side hustle in the United States, at least. And there's lots of different ways you can do it all the way from renting out extra space in your house to renting out an extra bedroom as an Airbnb to buying properties and turning them into Airbnbs or rentals. So definitely do your research on this one, but I will give it an A tier ranking. Next one on the list is going to be one that's more and more common. A lot of people are talking about this one, and that is ATMs. So this could be a traditional ATM where you get cash out of it, or it could be what's known as a Bitcoin ATM. So this one is pretty good. It does require some investment up front. If you want to try to scale this, you are going to have to hire employees who go and empty the ATMs. And of course, there's going to be a lot of trust issues there. But yeah, there are a lot of people out there that are making like $10,000 a month semi-passive from this. And I would say it's relatively beginner friendly as well. So I'll put this one into B tier. All right, so next one on the list is going to be laundry mats. So this one is definitely not very sexy. It's not one that a lot of people like really want to get into. It's also a lot of work because you're literally going to have to like have buckets to carry all the coins and then you're going to have to count all the coins out. And typically you'll have a machine that does that, but then you have to exchange those coins for, you know, paper money. And if you want to scale this again, you're going to have to hire employees that you can trust. Plus on top of that, you're either going to have to rent, lease, or buy a property that has a laundromat on it. So that does add some complexity to it and it makes it a little bit less beginner friendly. At the same time, I I think this is one that not a lot of people want to get into because again, it doesn't sound that sexy. So I'll give this one a B tier ranking. Next is going to be a YouTube channel or just a creator in general. So for instance, a TikToker, someone who creates content on Instagram, uh, Twitter is pretty good as well. And of course, the platform that you use is going to be based on the platforms that you actually look at yourself. So if you watch YouTube all the time, you should probably start a YouTube channel. If you're on Twitter all the time, you should probably start a Twitter, etc. And then also the platforms are going to be more or less good depending on what other business model you're doing because typically people will start like a YouTube channel they'll have another business on top of it but with that being said the best platform overall without a doubt the heavyweight champion of the world is YouTube, right? YouTubers make the most money. There's the most YouTubers that are financially independent because of YouTube. And it's the platform that all the TikTokers and the Instagram people want to go to, right? They're all trying to get onto YouTube because it's just really easy, good, sustainable money. Now, one other thing I'm gonna say, and I know this is kind of a little bit self-deprecating, but you don't have to be that smart to become a creator or an influencer or a YouTuber or whatever you wanna call it. You literally just have to talk about stuff that you already know a 
a lot about, right? So if there's something you're already passionate about or you already know a lot about it, that's the kind of thing that you would probably want to start a YouTube channel on or just become a creator on in general. Like when I go out and I meet people who start software companies or I meet people who start service companies or I meet people who are in e-com or I meet people who are Amazon FBA owners or people who own blogs, all this sort of thing. Usually the impression that I get is like, these are really smart people. YouTubers on the other hand, not necessarily that smart, okay? You do not have to be that big brain in order to start a successful YouTube channel. And on top of that, there are YouTubers out there like Mr. Beast that's making between 50 and $100 million a year and probably more than that if you count the equity in his brands. There's really smart YouTubers out there like Alex Hormozzi who set up their YouTube channel in such a way where they use it to basically invest in other businesses. So he basically uses his YouTube channel as a funnel to make money in his private equity business. And he's probably making over $100 million a year when it comes to equity. So there's some really smart ways to use YouTube um, and there's just it's just really easy to make money in general. So this last month, for instance, and I'm not saying this to brag or anything, I'm just giving this as an example. This last month, I made over $60,000 just from AdSense alone, right? Just from AdSense. I know channels that have like 1,000, 2,000 subscribers that are making 100,000 plus dollars per month. And it scales pretty freaking high as well. And the best thing about it is it couples really well with just about any other business that you're gonna do. So I have to put YouTube in S tier. This is really a no brainer. Some of the other content platforms are also in S tier, but like I said, YouTube is the best. Next on the list is going to be drop shipping slash e-com slash physical products. So this is one that's really interesting because if this was not for beginners, I would put this one in S tier, no question, because this is one that you can scale to make, you know, a hundred million dollars a year if you want to. There are physical product businesses out there, especially e-com businesses that are making a hundred million dollars a year. But for beginners, this is really complicated. I mean, let's just, let's just talk about this. Okay. There are so many different skills that you have to get really good at to be successful with e-com. Even if you're drop shipping and you don't have to worry about logistics, you don't have to worry about storage. You don't have to worry about actually, you know, designing the products themselves. You're basically just reselling products. You still have to get good at hiring people. You still have to get good at managing people and leadership. You have to get very good at marketing. Then you have to get good at the back end stuff like customer service, fulfillment, etc. There are a lot of skills that you have to have dialed in. And this is one of those businesses where you have to know your numbers like the back of your hand, right? This is not one of those businesses where you can kind of just like halfway know your numbers. You have to know your numbers incredibly well. So you basically have to get good at like data analytics. So if this was for more advanced people, I would put this in S tier, but for beginners, I'm going to put it in B tier. Next one on the list is going to be a lawn mowing business. So there's a lot of random like physical type businesses out there that are really easy to start. Uh, don't require much startup capital. Of course, it's very difficult to scale a business like this. It might even be hard to get it to $10,000 a month if we're talking pure profit, but it's really easy to make a couple extra thousand dollars a month. So because of the fact that it's hard to scale, um, it would be hard to get to $10,000 a month, but it's easy to make it to a couple thousand dollars a month. I will go ahead and put this one into C tier. Now, by the way, if you disagree with me or agree with me on any of these, or you think there's other ones that I should have included, go ahead and comment down below. It'll start a conversation that everyone can benefit from, whether you agree with me or disagree with me. So everyone wins. All right. So next let's talk about vending machines. So this one is kind of like in between a laundromat business and an ATM business. I think an ATM business is going to be better than this because I think it's more profitable. But I think it's also a little easier to do than a laundromat business because of the fact that you don't necessarily have to buy like physical property or rent or lease it. So it's easier to get started. It is going to take a lot of work restocking these vending machines and also collecting the money. And if you hire someone to do that, of course, you have to trust them. So yeah, overall, I think I'm going to put this one into C tier. Next one is one that I am a big fan of, especially if you're just starting out. And that's going to be a power washing or cleaning in general business. So this is something where I do think there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of people who just don't want to do this. But if you're someone who's not afraid to work really hard, this could be a great opportunity for you. And I do think you can make it to $10,000 a month doing this. Now, of course, it'd be hard to scale. If you want to scale this type of business, it's going to take like a lot of skills. You have to get extremely good at hiring, leadership, management, logistics, etc. But just getting to $10,000 a month, this one is pretty easy, I'd say. And I think there's a lot of opportunity out there for people who are not afraid to just work hard. Now, there's a lot of little sub niches you can get into here. For instance, there is an entire niche of cleaning where you basically go to restaurants and you clean their ventilation systems. And some of these types of cleaning businesses do, of course, require specialized cleaning equipment. And of course, you do have to spend a little bit of money on that. But yeah, these types of businesses are pretty good. Um, I'm going to put this one in A tier. Next is going to be one of my absolute favorites. It's one of the best business models you can possibly do. 
And that's online courses, online coaching, and online consulting. So basically information products. Now online courses, you probably can't scale as high. I think some of the best people out there are doing about $10 million a year or so doing online courses. I'm sure there's some outliers there that are doing more than that. But the thing about online courses is if you actually wanna get people an outcome, you have to choose something that's relatively easy to accomplish. So if you're trying to get someone an outcome with something that's not easy to accomplish, like starting a business, for instance, online courses typically are not gonna get people there. They might help you like 20% of the way or maybe even 50% of the way if they're really good, but they're not gonna get you all the way to the finish line. And that's where coaching and consulting comes in. So I actually prefer coaching and consulting, and I've spent a ton of money on online courses, and typically they will help, they're extremely helpful. But the stuff that I've gotten the most value out of that I've spent money on is coaching and consulting. And that's because you get to work directly with people, you get feedback, you basically get to pay for a mentor. And then on top of that, you get the online course component, because typically there's an online course that's connected to it. Now, coaching and consulting typically is going to cost more. Online courses could range anywhere from like $10 to $2,000, whereas coaching and consulting is typically going to be much more expensive than that. And that's because the person is actually spending their time, you know, directly interacting with you. So coaching and consulting is a little bit more work and it requires you to directly spend your time with people. But at the same time, you're typically going to be getting them better results and you can make more money. So at the top end, I've seen coaches and consultants making like 30 to $40 million a year. This is probably not one of those businesses that's going to get you to $100 million a year unless you start like some really crazy other businesses that kind of tie into your main business. For instance, I've seen people who have also started software businesses and then the software is the thing that actually gets them to 100 million a year but this is honestly a great one to get into for a beginner both courses as well as coaching and you can basically just teach people about things that you're already good at right so let's say you've gotten an entry-level job in IT for instance you could go online and start a course on how to get an entry-level job in IT it's literally that simple just teach people how to do something that you've already done so this one is great for beginners it's great for intermediates and I'd say it's even really good for advanced. And I'd say a lot of people could make more money, but they actually choose to be coaches. And the reason for that is because it's extremely fulfilling helping someone through this entire journey. But if you're trying to make it to like $100 million a year, or like a billion dollar business, this one is not going to get you there. But still for beginners, I will give this one an S tier ranking. Next one on the list is going to be pet care. So something like dog sitting, dog walking, taking care of people's reptiles while they're out of town, that sort of thing. So this is one that a few years ago, I probably would have given an S tier ranking because there's just so much opportunity. Now it's still pretty good, but it's a little bit harder to break in. You definitely can get this one to $10,000 a month relatively easily. If you want to get it to like 100,000 a month, um, you'd have to learn a bunch of other skills. But yeah, this one's still pretty good. Um, I'd probably put it into B tier, maybe low B tier, high C tier, but I'll be nice and put it into B tier. Next one on the list is going to be landscaping services. So lawn mowing and landscaping services are very closely related, but landscaping is, you know, it goes beyond that. This is another one where it's hard work. You're going to be out in the sun. You're going to be working. You're probably going to be sweating. Not a lot of people want to do it, but if you want to make some money, this is a super easy way to get started. You don't have to be a marketing genius to make money in landscaping. It's as simple as putting up a post on Facebook Marketplace, putting up a post on Craigslist, maybe putting out some flyers, talking to your family and asking them if anyone needs landscaping services. And then after that, you can probably get most of your business just from word of mouth by doing a good job. So this one is relatively easy to make it to $10,000 a month profit. It'd be very, very difficult to scale, but I'll go ahead and put this one into B tier. Next is going to be print on demand. And this is one that I've been getting more and more interested in as I've been studying it. So there's so many different types of print on demand. And basically what this is, if you're not aware, is you're an artist, right? And you make some kind of t-shirt design. You put it on a t-shirt, you put it up on a website like Etsy, and then the t-shirt's not actually made yet, right? So you don't have to have inventory. You don't have to be a genius at logistics. Someone buys the t-shirt, company makes it and ships it to them, and then you get a percentage of the profit. So basically all you have to be good at is designing stuff that people actually wanna buy. And then on top of that, you have to have some marketing skills. Now I think in the next five to 10 years, there's gonna be even more opportunity because they're gonna be combining 3D printing with print on demand. So for instance, if you want a really cool Halloween costume, you'll be able to actually go online, 
design it in a 3D world or someone else designs it for you, but then you enter your body measurements in and then you're gonna be able to order that and it's gonna show up at your door within a week. So that is freaking awesome. And I think there's gonna be a ton of opportunities, especially when print on demand goes 3D and they start using 3D printers in order to fulfill these orders. But even right now, there's still a lot of opportunities, stuff like creating artwork that goes up on a canvas or goes up on a poster or just really clever clothing or t-shirts. You know, there's lots of YouTubers out there that are making millions and millions of dollars a year for merch. I still think print on demand is pretty good. I'd say it's a little bit too hard to get into uh, just from a beginner standpoint. Uh, so for that reason, I can't give it S tier status. I'm going to put it into A tier. All right, next one on the list is going to be Amazon FBA. And of course, this is a type of physical product business, but it's going to be a little bit different than the other ones like Shopify, for instance. The cool thing about Amazon FBA is you actually own the Amazon FBA business and so you can sell it. But the bad thing about Amazon FBA is Amazon owns your data and Amazon can actually create their own products and they do this often. And when they have your data, they're going to know which products after you've done all the hard work to get that data sell the best. So at any time they can kind of just replace you and then they can just make it to where their products show up on the first page of Amazon and your products don't because they control that, which is a little bit alarming if you ask me. But with that being said, this has been a good side hustle for a long period of time. Lots and lots of people have been able to make $10,000 a month doing this. Lots and lots of people have been able to make businesses that they end up selling. I have tried this myself and I can tell you that it's much, much harder than the gurus make it out to be. It also typically does require some investment as as well. So it's not super easy to get into right off the bat. So Shopify, for instance, is a lot easier to start than Amazon. So for those reasons, I will give Amazon FBA a B tier ranking. Next one on the list is going to be SaaS companies. So this is software as a service. Now, the thing about this one is if this was not for beginners, this one would be S tier. In fact, it would probably be in a tier of its own. It would be in like S plus tier because this one is without a doubt, probably the easiest way to become a billionaire. But for beginners, uh, there's a pretty big barrier to entry. Now, there's a lot of products out there called no code products that are making it much easier to break into the SaaS industry. But I've tried some of these no code products out and they are awesome. Don't get me wrong, but they're still way too simplified. Like the products that you make are still way too simple. There's also white label products you can use. So for instance, you know, let's say you want to create like a CRM and you want to do it for a very specific industry. There's lots of different white label products out there like Go High Level where you can basically use their CRM call it your product, modify a few things here and there, and then sell it as your own product. And that's how you could kind of get started. And then later on, maybe you make your own software. So it is a little bit easier to break into this. But the truth is you have to have a lot of other skills if you want to get good at this. So for that reason, for beginners, I'm going to put SaaS in B tier. Next on the list is going to be flipping. And this is probably like the oldest side hustle in the world. You buy something low and you sell it high. I've done this my entire life, basically. It truly is a side hustle. It's something that you can start while you're working a job very easily. You can even do this if you're in middle school. And all it really requires is expertise in a particular product, right? So you kind of just have to know like, okay, for instance, if you're flipping cars, how much is this car worth? If you're flipping baseball cards, how much is this baseball card worth? If you're flipping phones, how much is this phone worth? If you're flipping shoes, how much are these shoes worth? That's basically all the skill you have to have. So this one is super, super easy to get into. If you want to make it to like $10,000 a month, you're going to have to learn a lot of other skills. You're probably going to have to hire a bunch of people. So it is relatively difficult to scale. Even to $10,000 a month, it's probably kind of hard to get to. But this is one that you could literally just like right now, you could just at the end of this video, you could just stop the video and start this side hustle right now. You, you don't have to do anything to start it. So for that reason, I'm going to put this one into a tier. Next one on the list is going to be SMMA, Social Media Marketing Agency. This is one that has a ton of hype right now. It might be the most hyped up uh, side hustle. And for good reason, service-based businesses are relatively easy to sell. It's probably easier to sell a service than just about anything else. For instance, if you're trying to sell like a course, for instance, the customer has to basically do all the work, right? You provide the information, but the customer has to do all the work. If you're selling coaching or consulting, it's known as done with you. And that's where you 
you do some of the work and the customer does some of the work. So that's going to be more attractive from the standpoint of being a customer. And then if you're selling SMMA, you're basically doing all the work. It's done for you, right? So that's extremely attractive to a customer. But with that being said, the most stressed out business owners I know are people who own SMMA businesses, right? People who own agencies are the most stressed out business owners I know. So it's relatively easy to get started. I'd say it's kind of easy to make $10,000 a month, but because of the fact that it's gotten so popular lately, it's really getting saturated. There's certain niches that are much easier to make that kind of money with than other niches. But this one is for absolute hustlers. I do like SMMA because there's some skills you're gonna learn. You're gonna have to learn if you get into SMMA. For instance, you're gonna have to learn sales. You're gonna have to learn marketing. You're gonna have to learn how to build an offer. You're gonna have to learn how to build a good product. And these are skills that are super, super valuable for you to learn, but it's also extremely stressful. Um, you're basically gonna be working all the time. So there's a lot of downsides to SMMA as well. I'll go ahead and put it into A tier. And very closely related to SMMA is gonna be B2B service-based businesses. So this would be something like uh, cybersecurity, cloud IT, staffing businesses, businesses where you are selling your service to another business. So I do think there's a ton of opportunity here. The downside to this one is you have to have highly specialized knowledge. So if you're someone who's watching this and you are a, like a high level, cybersecurity professional or a high level IT professional or a high level coder, this could be a really good one for you to get into. There are B2B service businesses out there that do make it to 100 million plus dollars a year. Recently, there's been a bunch of them that are either cloud related IT related or cybersecurity related that have been making tons of money. They've been growing incredibly fast too. And I know this because I do a ton of research on these types of companies that are hiring people all the time. But with that being said, it does require very high levels of knowledge, also very high levels of skill to get started. So the barrier to entry is pretty high. And so for that reason, if this one was for like more advanced people, I'd probably give it like an S tier rating. But for beginners, I'm going to put this one at B tier. But like I said, if you're like a high level cybersecurity professional or a high level IT professional, this could be a really good one for you. Next on the list is gonna be YouTube automation. So this is basically where you start like a faceless YouTube channel and you hire people to automate it for you. This is another one that's really hot right now. You're hearing people talk about this left and right. And I do love YouTube, don't get me wrong. I think YouTube is amazing. And I do think there's a lot of people out there that are crushing it with this. But because of the fact that it's been getting so popular, I do think it's getting pretty saturated. Another thing you have to keep in mind is if you're starting a YouTube channel that's faceless, where you're just hiring a voiceover actor, you're hiring you're hiring a script writer, you're hiring a video editor, a thumbnail creator, all these sorts of things, and you're not doing anything yourself, anybody in the world could technically do that, right? Like, so you're competing with the rest of the world. And if you're an American or a British person or Canadian, like from a first world English speaking country, which is where most of the money comes from uh, when it comes to YouTube, it probably just makes a lot more sense for you to start a normal YouTube channel with a personal brand where you show your face, because it's much easier to grow that type of channel. Now, on top of that, you have to learn certain skills. First of all, you have to be very good at YouTube. YouTube, and that's an entire skill set of its own. And that involves thumbnail creation, that involves editing, because even if you hire an editor, you have to know what good editing looks like. It also involves hiring, managing a team, etc. So there are a lot of skills that you have to either learn or be very good at already. But with that being said, I still do think it's a pretty good opportunity. Anything YouTube related is going to be good. I'll give this one an A tier ranking. Next on the list is going to be trading. So I maybe I'm biased here, but Trading to me, man, it, it's just not a good idea for like 99.9% .9 of people. First of all, if you understand how the markets work, it's literally a zero sum game. So if you're making money, someone else is losing money. Almost every other type of business that I mentioned here is not a zero sum game because value is being exchanged and excess value is being created. But with trading, it's literally just a zero sum game. So even if you win, somebody else is losing. So I guess if you are, enjoy that kind of thing, then this could be good for you. But for me, it's just, I don't feel like I'm adding any value to the world if I'm trading and like making profits. So it's unattractive to me from that standpoint. And then the second standpoint is if you look at the statistics, the vast majority of traders lose money because the truth is you are going to be competing against people on Wall Street, people who have the best information, the best software, the best consultants, the best teammates. They also have the best educations. I mean, these people are gigabrains on Wall Street. They all have like a 130 to 150 IQ plus. And you think you're gonna be able to beat them with all their advanced technology, all their competitive advantages. And let's be honest, they probably have a lot of insider information that you don't know about. Do you think you're gonna be able to beat them all on your own? Probably not. So I will say the one type of trading that I do think there's a lot of opportunity with is cryptocurrency trading, although that's 
super, you know, risky as well. But I do think that just because of the fact that Wall Street isn't as familiar with cryptocurrency trading, you're probably going to have a better chance of being successful. But overall, I'm going to have to put, I, and I, I know I'm going to get a lot of people mad at me for this. I'm going to have to put this one in F tier. I really do not like trading. For the average person, I think trading is absolutely terrible. And on top of that, I think that most of the ways that people do trading is basically gambling and it becomes an addiction. And that's why all these trading gurus end up making so much money is because they're literally just getting people addicted to trading. And it's kind of just like regulated gambling, essentially. So yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna go on about this. I, I don't like trading. I don't think it's good for like 99.9% .9 of people out there. And even if you are good at it, you're literally not adding any value to the world. You're just taking money from other people. Twitter ghostwriting is gonna be next. This one requires a very high level of skill. So I wouldn't even think about this one unless you're someone who spends a lot of time on Twitter and you're also a very good writer. But with that being said, if you spend a lot of time on Twitter and you're a good writer, there are a lot of people out there that are kind of thought leaders and also people who own, you know, hedge funds, for instance, people who are in private equity, who hire people that are Twitter ghostwriters. Now you can get paid directly. You could make something like, I don't know, $5,000 a month, Twitter ghostwriting, or what's probably smarter is doing a deal where you make a percentage of whatever they end up selling off of their Twitter. So if you are partnering with someone who sells like a high ticket uh, coaching or consulting program, you could make a percentage based off of how much money they're making on Twitter. And I do think Twitter is an untapped market when it comes to this stuff. And I do think Twitter ghostwriting is very valuable. Another thing you have to get good at is basically talking in that person's voice, which can be very difficult. But yeah, Twitter ghostwriting is pretty good. Um, I'll put it in B tier. The next one on the list is going to be, I'm just gonna kind of clump together a bunch of super valuable careers that are kind of content slash business related. And that's gonna be appointment setter, closer, media buyer, copywriter, and creative director. So creative director would be someone who kind of like runs an Instagram or runs a YouTube, that sort of thing. So these are all careers where you're basically directly contributing to someone's bottom line. So it's very close to you just directly making them money. And in a lot of these, you can actually get a percentage split. And these are all technically things that you can do either as an employee, part-time, a freelancer, or you could start your own kind of agency as well. So there's a lot of opportunity with these. You basically only have to learn one skill with each one of them. Appointment setting is basically where you learn to talk to people in DMs or depending on the type of appointment setting you're doing, you might do cold outbound or cold calling. Lots of opportunity with appointment setting. With closing, you literally just have to get good at sales. That's it. With media buyer, you have to get good at marketing. That's it. With copywriter, you have to get good at copywriting. That's it. And with creative director, you have to get good at whatever platform you're on. So like a YouTube creative director, you'd have to be good at YouTube. So all of these are relatively straightforward. Most types of businesses, you have to get good at at least like two or three different skills. Whereas with these, it's basically just one skill and that's extremely attractive. And then additionally, these are really good for basically meeting people who are already successful business owners because successful business owners are almost always looking for these positions. And so if you can get good at this one skill that these successful business owners are always looking for, you can start making money from them and then learning directly from them. So lots and lots of people I know have started off as closers. Lots and lots of people I've know have started off as appointment setters. And these are people who eventually went on to start their own successful businesses. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and put it into S tier as well. Next one on the list is going to be SEO slash blogs. So basically creating a blog. This one is super solid. It's been around forever. The one thing I will say about it, it's not that difficult to do, but the one thing I will say about it is it requires a ton of of patience. And most people, of course, do not have patience. You are probably not going to be making much money from your blog for the first year, maybe even year and a half. But a year and a half down the line, your blog's going to start actually making money and it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. So you have to be consistently putting out really good SEO optimized content, making absolutely zero money from it. But then a year, year and a half down the line, you're probably going to start making some money and then it's just going to snowball. So most people don't have that kind of patience. But I will say this is one where if you, it really doesn't require that much skill. And especially if you're someone who's very good at a particular subject and you're writing your own blogs, it's super easy to break into some of these really competitive keywords because most people are using AI to write the keywords or they're, you know, outsourcing it to someone who isn't an expert on. So SEO and blogs, ah, it's, it's tough to say just because uh, it requires a lot of patience and most people give up for that reason, but I'll give this one an A tier rating. Next one on the list is going to be affiliate marketing. So this is one that is amazing to make money from because all you have to do is be good at marketing. 
marketing. That's it. You just have to learn one skill and that is marketing. So you partner with some kind of product that's already proven. This is a product that is already proven to be really good. And then you literally just get traffic to the product. So really it's not even marketing you have to be good at. It's just traffic generation. You have to get traffic to the product. And of course it has to be good traffic. And then you get a percentage whenever someone ends up buying. So you might get like 50%, for instance. So this one is really good because you can partner it up with just about any other business that I mentioned on this list. So for instance, if you start a YouTube channel, you're getting views from YouTube, it's incredibly easy to start making money from affiliate marketing. It's also a great way to kind of just launch a business without having to create the entire business. So if you think you want to make a course, for instance, you could just partner with someone who's already selling a course, get the affiliate commissions from it, see if it's a good fit for your audience or just a good fit for you in general. And then later on down the line, once you've confirmed that, you can make your own course. With that being said, it's much easier to make money with affiliate marketing if you already have an audience or you're very good at generating traffic. And generating traffic is one of the most difficult and competitive skills to learn. But with that being said, affiliate marketing is still amazing. I will put it into S tier. By the way, if you haven't checked it out already, I did make a video on seven side hustles that nobody is talking about. And you can check that out by clicking right here.